and uh, good to see you. He is the author of Four Soldiers. And now we want to go to Jeff Stultz. Hey, Jeff. Oh, oh no, Nikolai. Nikolai. I'm sorry. It's my fault. I <laughs> Nikolai Fugil. What is it? Fulzi. Oh, my God. So, Nikolai, thank you so much. Now we have Levante Rhodes. Hey, Levante Rhodes. Good you. Jerry Bruckheimer. And um, Chris Hemsworth. Chris, come on down. Producer Molly Smith. And producer as well as star Thad Luckinbill. <laughs> Jeff Stoltz. Sean Coppers. And then General Dostum. Nabid Negabon. Thank you all for being here. And I'll tell you what, just to make sure that everyone knows your voices and who you are, let's go ahead and start with Doug. If you'll just introduce yourself and, uh, you know, sort of your name, rank, and serial number. Sure. My name is Doug Stanton. I'm the author of 12 Strong. I'm really pleased to be here and thrilled with this film. Um, it couldn't be a greater honor for a writer. Thank you. Okay. I am uh, Nikolai Fulsi. I'm the director of 12 Strong, and it is also a true honor to be here today. And I'm still pinching myself in arm. I can't believe that I made it to here, but uh, I'm deeply honored to be here. I'm very really thankful. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, Rhodes, and equally honored to be here with the rest of these guys. Jerry Bruckheimer, one of the producers. Uh, Thank you all for coming. I'm never going to cut you off again. That's okay. <laughs> Anytime. It's the last film I'll do with you. Uh, Chris Hemsworth, I play uh, Captain Mitch Nelson. Okay. I'm Molly Smith, one of the producers. Bad Luck and Bill, one of the producers, and also got the pleasure of playing one of these guys. Jeff Stoltz, uh, play Sean Coffers. Uh, Navi Nigapon, I'm playing General Dustin. Okay, let's go ahead and open this up to questions. We've got a lot of good ones and a lot of good answers, I know. So we're going to start with the first person. And stand up. This will be better if everybody stands up, too. Okay, hi. Um, Gerald made a photo of your voice. Um, my question is for Chris. And if Doug or Jerry want to add on this, that's fine. Um, obviously, you're best known for playing a superhero. This is a great story about what I feel are true heroes. And I feel it's really important because in the history of Hollywood, Apocalypse Now and Platoon, a lot of films haven't really shown the military in the best of light, especially the men. Um, so is, was that part of the appeal of this film for you and how you wanted to play it? And do you feel that the military are heroes? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I did, as you say, I'd done a lot of stuff sort of um, in the comic book world and the fantasy-based sort of heroes and so on, and it was a lot of fun, but desperately wanted to do something um, with some real heart and, and, and something more grounded, and this script came along a few years ago. Uh, my first instinct was I was just couldn't believe it was a true story. Um, I knew about this conflict and this war. Uh, like a lot of people, but not about this mission. And um, and I was sort of engrossed and shocked and, and fascinated by the details. Um, then speaking with the real guys through the process, and there's just such an honesty and an um, openness and uh, a lack of sort of, you know, dramatization or ego or so on with, where, as they retell and recount these these events. And, um, and such a humility, you know, and as you say, they're the, are real heroes and, and that you know to put themselves in these positions in harm's way with their safety uh in jeopardy you know but for you know for the for the rest of our safety um is something beyond admirable um something that is inspiring um and something that you know i felt an honor to be asked to play this character and be part of the story but um you know definitely felt the weight of that responsibility i think we all did um, and was very thankful that we had the real guys there. We had this amazing cast, crew, um, producer. We had Doug, this sort, of, um, this sort of resource of knowledge at our fingertips. So it was um, an incredible experience and, and one that I'll remember for a long, long time. Okay. Right over there. Hi, it's such a great story. And when you're watching these characters, they have such fearlessness. Um, and they discuss in the movie the difference between a soldier and a warrior. For the actors, what do you feel is the responsibility for you to bring a real life take on these heroes and not just these people who are gung-ho on, you know, on the war path? Can you talk about the difference between soldiers, warriors, and the responsibility of showing this fearlessness in a, rea in a realistic portrayal? Yeah, but, uh, but, for it, the, all the actors. Everybody, yeah. <laughs> go, go as one 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the difference between a warrior and a and a, uh, and a soldier is warriors do with their heart, soldiers do with their mind, and I think it's very valuable to lead with your heart because that's, at least in my opinion, that's the only thing that's uh, the most true. It's the most honest form of reaction um, in any way. So, I mean, most of the times we, you know, when we think and lead with our mind, we, we make mistakes. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just an honor again to be. To have the opportunity to embody someone who I really feel is a warrior in the best light. Chris, come on, everybody. Yeah. Oh. Uh, um. I, uh, the last time I ever cut you off, Chris. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to try and repeat, you know, all your knowledge. Anyway, what you got? <laughs> What, what makes this movie so fascinating, what the, they've done so brilliantly, is really that these guys, the, the special forces soldiers, the diplomat on the ground. So when you, when you think about this movie, you go home, you want to think about World War II, actually, and people drop behind enemy lines to foment resistance. So therefore, the relationship that Chris has with Naveed in the film is really a key central driving uh, emotional point. And so the movie is both filled with action, but as you saw, and also... Um, really tries to drive home the fact that this is America working at its best to create social change and using uh, combat if necessary, but also um, using the power of the mind, as Trevante said, They're almost like Jedi Knights here, uh, trying to do a mind meld with the culture that they're engaging with and being very respectful of it. So it's a very uh, interesting, complex movie in that way. Yeah, the way they were able to um, adapt and evolve and embed themselves within this, this world um, and uh, work with the local people, uh, not against them, working with them and, and fighting a common enemy um, and the brotherhood they formed with you know, the local Afghan people but also amongst the soldiers um, was something that kept coming up you know, amongst all of the guys I spoke to in this experience and, and uh, the, you know, the relationships they still keep to this day with one another. Um, it's as strong as any family bond I've ever had and, and that was something that was always again, you know, inspiring and, and, and pretty pretty evident with uh, their approach and to why they did things you know. Did any of you all research this with Rob Riggle? Since he was a former Marine I mean, he was maybe a go-to guy for some of these things how to hold the weapons or We had, we had uh, not that Rob wouldn't be the perfect guy to go to We had, we had uh, some of the real guys that this book was based on. We had military advisors there. One of our, the actual actors, uh, Kenny Sheard, is a former Navy SEAL. So we, we had a lot of people with a lot of experience that we leaned on. We had, and by the end of it, we would all, everyone was, before we made a mover, held a gun, we'd kind of turn to Kenny and he would go, mm. yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm uh, So we, we had people there to make sure we didn't, we didn't uh, screw it up. And that was important to everybody, to the producers, to Jerry, when they developed this, to just, be authentic and do pay you know pay these guys the respect that they deserve and then tell the story that, that it uh, should be told I think go ahead go, uh, Please. I, I think one of the most important thing for us was that uh, in my opinion uh, we had Mark Noosh Bob uh, Pennington and Jared Seeger who was actually the guy on the, on the ground uh, they were able to tell us exactly what was happening on the ground and um, taking dog's book and then um, the script and put put all these elements together we were able to discover the truth what was exactly happening on the ground and uh, even the, some of the Afghans who helped us on the set uh, they were there were few of them they were actually involved in that incident they were there there were soldiers who are right down refugees in uh, and they live in Albuquerque, and um, I think they were, they really helped us by telling us exactly how they were feeling, and for me it was, that was crucial just to sit there and listen to them. And it was great too, because Naveed reached out to a lot of these communities, and uh, he should get a lot of credit for that. It was, a, it was great to have the real people there, authentic Afghans who knew it, just like we had authentic people teaching us how to, you know, do the milita military stuff right. We had them as well, and, and thank you, Nadine, for that. My pleasure. No, uh, one of the most important things was, um, because I think this is, a, uh, this is the first film that is truly shows the, uh, the, what's, 
what Afghans went through okay. and uh, the, how we united with them to achieve our goal. And um, the families that I talked to, some of them, they didn't want to be involved in the film. But when I told them what we are doing and what is this film about, the head of the families, they got together and all of a sudden, we couldn't find any Afghan background or uh, actor to work with us. And all of a sudden, we had about 400 people lined <laughs> up. And everybody from Uzbek families, Tajik families, um, um, Hazara families, uh, all of them, because the heads of the families, they were sitting, this older man, um, Mr. Sharifi, I think, was sitting there and he was checking everybody in <laughs> when they were coming in and everybody would come kiss his hand and walk in and sign up for the movie and we were really blessed to have them on the movie great yes. uh who's got the mic right there to stand up so we can see <laughs> good morning my name is kathy with bella mommy and i left last night with so many emotions i was overwhelmed and i actually didn't sleep at all last night because i had learned so much from the movie and from what these heroes truly did for our country by sacrificing your own lives. Um, if there was one thing that you could say that a person can learn from it or what, what they can walk away knowing from this movie, what is it that you could share? Because I'm definitely putting this down as a homeschool book for homeschooling because everyone needs to know this story because it's, it's real and it's raw. So if you could share with me what I can say, what you recommend or what, what your um, point of view is, that would be great, please. I think everyone should answer that. Uh, <laughs> what's up, man? Yeah, I, I, I think when uh, the moment that you um, there's an expression that says you can see the truth when you're blind and you can hear the truth when you're deaf. So if you put all the differences aside and look at the person as who the person is, then you will see how how similar we are, and then you will discover our similarities, not our differences. And that's what the world is about. It's about us being the same. There's no difference, except the color. Who cares? Go, go inside. What you find inside you is pure white. And there's no difference between the white that's inside me and anybody else who's sitting here. All of us, are, we are the same. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you can't follow that. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, what he said. Um, I, I'm just a lover, what, not a fighter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if this answers your question, but but to me, uh, this is the thing to take away from me was that I I think everybody that was old enough obviously remembers the where where they were at and the way they felt on 9/11. Um, you know, and this was. There are plenty of other stories. It, it, even at this time, there are other operations happening. This one just happens to be written really, really well by Tug, and it really shows the story. But um, these are 12 guys that made what ended up, what, what could have been, they, choo they chose to make what could have been the ultimate sacrifice because of what they believed in, what, Ameri what they believed America stood for, and what they, they uh, you know, they, they left their families behind. Some guys left their families behind, and they, they knew that there was a chance that some, if not all of them, wouldn't come back. And this is about a love for one of another and a love for the the ideal of what America is. And, and to they believed that they were making a difference so that nothing like 9-11 would happen again. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of echo that. I, I think, for me, what stands out most is the bravery of these guys we you know like like you said we all a lot of us in this room remember where we were and what we were thinking on 9-11 and just the fact that these guys were the first you know essentially the first guys in you know uh didn't really know how to how to do the job they were supposed to do but they learned on the fly and they did it you know without complaining and they <laughs> i'm sure they complained a little bit but you know <laughs> they, they they did it they did it through bravery and patriotism and the right way and that 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 was really need to portray absolutely i mean there, there's there's so many elements to this story but i think something that people we've seen people respond to when we've screened the film is um is the the sacrifice the you know there's a line in the movie i love so much where it says uh michael shannon says um how do you love your family and leave them to go to war 
And I think that's such a poetic, beautiful line because, you know, people do this every day and, and they make sacrifices for their country, for their, you know, the camaraderie, the love, it's their duty. And I, I think we really tried to capture the spirit of the military, all, all branches of the military and, and soldiers in general, um, you know, by showing some of the layers and complexities of the home life and their families. And then, of course, seeing the scope of what these guys went to go do. Um, you know, because they felt a sense of duty and, and uh, to fight for their country. Um, yeah, you know, something that um, I feel like a, a big thing that I took away from this experience, um, were, and this was definitely with the real guys themselves talking about how important it was for them, for their own survival, first when they first got there, to, to convince um, the, the local people they were fighting with that they weren't there to occupy the country, they were there to. to chase the same enemy and um, the, as Naveed said the, the local people that we had working with us um, from Afghanistan they were living in Albuquerque a number of them came up and said thank you for telling this story because um, you know I was there I fought with the Americans but people the whole world thinks I'm a terrorist mm -hmm. you know and he said I think it's so important that we, you know people know that we are we are on the same side and the invading force is the Taliban is al-Qaeda They're the ones who are the the infection that are coming in to take over and, and, and you know restructure the place and and um, So yeah, as you say a lot of them normally didn't want to be involved in films like this, but were sort of um, Couldn't get there quick enough and that that meant a lot I think to all of us and, and uh, as I said it there was certainly something that the soldiers were very concerned with as well in this mission I think that collaboration and um, the, the heart and the bond and the, the brotherhood they shared with them Yeah, I think that these men don't see themselves as heroes They're just doing their job. That's what they're trained to do. They do it because <clears throat> they love their country. They love their families and they're professionals and they're highly trained they're highly intelligent and they're deadly and the fact that they went into this country and bonded with the afghan people and you have to understand that there's so many different tribes and they all they show in the movie where <clears throat> they all fight amongst each other and the fact that this group of 12 men got in there and got them all to work together against a common foe which is so interesting and it all comes down to our military and how well trained these men are and they don't see it as sacrifice they see it as something that that's their job that's what they're trained to do and they're so good at it and we're very fortunate that we could show their excellence in this movie and thanks to Doug who found this story I think you should tell him how you found the story because this was classified we would never know about this story had it not been for Doug digging in he ran into a soldier started telling him about this classified mission that he couldn't talk about and so that's so interesting and there's this is just one mission there's so many others that we know nothing about they've done and what what really what happened right after 9 11 is president bush went to his military and said we have to root out this evil and how can we do it? And the military advisor said, well, it's going to take us at least six months to put a force over there. And he said, that is not acceptable. Tell me another way. And they went to, I guess, George Tennant, who was the head of the CIA at the time. And he went to this one of his operatives, the CIA agent, and he said, I want you to get in there. He put his hand on a map and he said, I want these five provinces. I'm not going to ask any questions. Just get it done. And that was J.R. Seeger, and he went in there right after 9-11 with, I think, seven guys. Mm -hmm. And he was the first group to go in, and quickly, I guess a week or two after that, is these 12 guys went in. So it just shows you what a small force can do and how good they are at their job. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I hope that people take away the identity that connectivity, love, uh, camaraderie, brotherhood, sisterhood, you know, uh, just, I guess, basically to relay what everybody else was saying, just loving and being open and connecting with people and perspective and understanding. Because my understanding of what anybody, in all honesty, from the Middle East was after this event was anybody from the Middle East is bad, which is so ignorant. You know what I mean? So to have the opportunity to read this story and be a part of this story, that shows the truth. And, uh, yeah, again, man, it was just, it's amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
Mm -hmm. And that's what I hope that people take away from the film. Yeah. Nikolai, you have to. I think, in a way, it's to sum it up. I think it's a also a homage to the human spirit. You know, I mean, these both on the Afghan and on the American side, these all, all these heroes were just ordinary people. And it could be your friend, your you know, your neighbor, and on the extreme circumstances, they all rose to the extraordinary. You know. <clears throat> yeah, it's funny you brought up that scene. How do you go to war and still love your family? I remember sitting in Bob Pennington's kitchen and he gave me that line as I was interviewing him and when I heard it in the movie it just I I got choked up because really in essence this is a secret story that we're now telling about a, a, a part of our society that's been fighting now for 17 years and in some ways to walk away from this movie is to also be aware of your own communities and what's going on and the sacrifices these people are making I think these guys succeeded because they weren't afraid to fail and we talk so much about success in this uh, country, which is great, but the reality is the SF, the Special Forces guys, are trained to learn how to fail. And if you go home to your homeschoolers, that is one thing that you can really take to them about what you can learn and to be adaptable and uh, open to change. And um, you know, these sound like kind of abstract ideas, but the people that Trevante and everyone else, and Chris and Jeff and uh, are playing, uh, that's what they go to school on. So this is a completely different kind of take on the combat movie. So, so where's the mic now? Where we got? Okay, right over there. Your turn. Yeah. Hola, uh, Jose Torres Estrellas in LA. Quick question, uh, Chris, did you ever learn Spanish? Next question. <laughs> Strength and conditioning that maybe y'all went through. Um, it's a mile high city. Want to know how bad your lungs were burning? <laughs> uh, walking up the hill, it, you know, my lungs were burning. It was um, it's funny. We had these little gator trucks that would kind of be whipping people up and down the hill, and and occasionally be like, "Oh, it's cool. I'll run up there." And within like three <laughs> steps, you know, the mountains like this, you got all your gear on, and the altitude, and it was like, "Bring the bring the truck back." <laughs> um, so yeah, we're in incredible, in incredible, uh, uh, you know, uh, peak condition. <laughs> now we did, um, we did three, four weeks of um, military t training, um, you know, weapons training, um, and for me that was the most important thing. From that was more the sort of chemistry and bonds that we formed. I mean, obviously the sort of technical side of things was um, an absolute must, but. Um, you know, it's tricky to fake that sort of the connective tissue that links all the exposition and so on at times together. And, um, you know, all the little kind of moments and, and, and jokes and beats in between the, you know, the, the bigger scenes was just because of the contribution of all the guys um, and our friendship that we formed in that training. So. You talk about military training, but that usually doesn't include horses. No. <laughs> How was all that? I mean, you all were really riding, right? That was... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there were no stunt, no stunt men at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think it was the first week that we were rehearsing. Um, I, I used to ride horses, so I said, okay, I go there. I forgot how old I am, so I did that on the horse. And the very first week, I never forget, I was riding, then it went into a gallop, and my trainer was telling me, don't gallop, don't gallop. I'm turning around to talk to him, and all of a sudden the horse is up in the air, jumping over the bush. I didn't know what to do, I came back, and that was it. For two weeks, I was walking like this. <laughs> But uh, when we were shooting the movie, the guys, they had to help me to get off the horse and on the horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was good. It was good. It was good training. <laughs> Angela? Okay. Um, yeah, I couldn't help thinking of Lawrence of Arabia watching this, particularly because of the bond between General Dotson and, and, and Mitch Nelson, but of course also the beautiful scenic vistas and the desert and all that. And I was just wondering for Nicolau, um, shooting this and, and getting those... And, spectacular widescreen cool shots I mean how was that for you and for you guys being out there in the desert, you talked a little bit about the altitude but can you talk a little bit about working in that kind of cruel environment mm. you know it was always important for me to try and uh, you know portray Afghanistan you know in, in the most accurate way and we've seen so many movies that you know try and get the terrain right and I really feel we did it we really took pains to go to very remote uh, areas I think the landscape is a huge character in the movie also and it was important that we sort of have brought all the elements together and sort of uh, immersed ourselves in that environment. And I wanted all the composition, the lensing to be like a, like a
like an epic war painting, you know, every frame, you know, she looked like hostile, barren, cold, you know, no comfort, you know, so it was important that the viewer felt uh, instantly sort of uh, hostile, you know what I mean, uh, uncomfortable in these environments, and I, and I think we, we, we did really well with it, yeah. We felt it too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's important that you might have <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's great. I think yeah. it made a difference, a huge difference. It did, yeah. yeah. I mean, having all the sort of, I mean, everything's on fire, the bombs, the noises, the smoke, right. and so on. More smoke, more so smoke, that was the common, you know, thing that Nicola would be yelling. Uh, more fire, and we'd be like, no, no, less, we can't see. Um, but it just, you know, you don't have to act at that point. You're reacting to the environment in the most authentic way. I think you might have no more potential harsh critic in the audience than me. Uh, I know some of you in the, on the, uh, the cast there. Uh, I'm a professor of Islamic history at uh, UMass Dartmouth, and I lived and breathed this story for 15 years. You know, I spent two months living with Ostum, uh, two summers uh, in Afghanistan, and J.R. Seeger was my boss at the CIA when I worked there. Uh, I researched this story for my book, The Last Warlord, which tells the other half, and you did too. I mean, this movie should be plotted uh, from the Muslim perspective. You gave the Muslims the other half of the story. You mentioned Omar Sharif uh, to Lawrence Arabia, and, and certainly Naveed was a very complex character. Uh, who, in many ways, is, was very compelling. Uh, my friend Margaret, she played Chris, uh, uh, you did a wonderful job. Uh, he's more straightforward. Uh, but uh, Nikolai, too, you, you brought the Muslim fabric to life, you know, the human terrain as well as the geographic ter terrain. Uh, so I, I saw the movie, and, and I was almost in tears, you know, having lived and breathed on the ground there and seen the shrine and historicized it. And I ran out, and I called General Dostum on the phone. And I spoke to him, and I used one word for it, Gairat, honor. They honored you, they honored Muslims, and in a climate where people like Trump are trying to divide us against Muslims and, uh, you know, paint them in broad brushstrokes, this movie and Naveed's portrayal, uh, very nuanced portrayal of a very complex character, really breathed Muslims to life. And I think shows them not as stereotypical enemies, but as our, our key allies. And everybody on the cast should be credited for that. Uh, but especially Naveed, I think, who, who came in and shows us we do have Muslim heroes who fight in the front lines. They're the ones uh, in, in Mosul, uh, or Mazar Sharif, uh, fighting so so many thanks uh, for that um, and, and I, I can't thank you all enough for that, that the Muslim aspect and I wish that if you could probably ask you a question what was it like Dostum's alive today he's vice president you know he's a very complex character he's not black or white he's gray what was it like fleshing out <laughs> such an amazing character and I know he, Jerry I know he sent you a letter personally right. telling you you can use his name and please bring him to life and on behalf of all the Uzbeks in Afghanistan and all Afghans thank you very much Tashakur <laughs> Real quick, right. you got, all, all you guys write that down. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, um, uh, Brian was very helpful because um, when I came in, I wasn't that familiar. I didn't know who General Dostum was or is. And um, his book is a bi biographical book about Dostum. So it's the different side of the this story. And I had to... Um, I use that to have an understanding, and um, Brian really helped me to understand Dostum, and also uh, Mr. Irfani, Ayub Irfani, who flew in from Afghanistan. Uh, he's, um, I think, um, General Dostum's um, ambassador, and he flew in and he brought us some of the some of the gear that actually Dostum wore, and some of the stuff that they used. And he came and brought me pictures and told me stories. I'm, I'm grateful to both of them. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. Thank we, I appreciate it. We only have time for one more question. Oh. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm just wondering, I know this was a declassified mission, but I'm curious if the levels of classified information maybe that you got into were ever closed off at any point. Uh, have names been changed for like fear of retaliation or anything like that, of that matter? Doug, yes, when I was composing the book, um, I started uh, in 2003, just shortly after the action of the mission, and uh, the guys asked me to provide pseudonyms. So um, sometimes you'll see that in the book. Uh, but, you know, I, fast forward to 2011, we're walking down Fifth Avenue with the same cohort of soldiers behind the horse soldier statue at its dedication. And uh, so the world has changed in that regard. Molly, why don't you close us out? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just, I'm thrilled to hear a lot of the complex questions here because it kind of shows what the film is. It's, it's not just your...
typical military, you know, action flick. It's so much more than that. It's, um, you know, it's a story of bravery. It's a story of camaraderie. Um, it's a story of brotherhood in a very unique way. And, you know, we were so honored to tell this story. And, and you know, Jerry always finds the most interesting stories. Mm -hmm. And I think most of his stories are usually about exactly what he said, the triumph of the human spirit. And um, I love that we were able to portray that. And I'm so honored to sit up here with this incredible cast. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you all so much, thank of you. course. This movie, 12 Strong, opens January 19th. Best of luck to you guys. Thank you all for everything. And get in the book. There's a lot more in the book. So, Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. 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 Thank you.